Hey, it's Gabe with API Nation. Today I'm going to show you seven things you didn't know you could do with Google Sheets. If you're not familiar with Google Sheets, it is a spreadsheet program similar to Excel, but it's available for free for everyone online. It has some great collaboration tools. These seven things are things we've picked up working with real estate professionals. Seven simple things that can make managing your contacts, your database, your business a little bit easier and they're all really easy to use. So let's get started. Number one, sync to your CRM. So we are API Nation, we're all about syncing apps to each other. I'm gonna show you how to sync Google Sheets to your CRM. Here we go. So the first thing you're gonna do is go to apination.com. So here on apination.com, you're gonna click Discover Connections. And then you're just gonna scroll on down to Google Sheets. And you're gonna see all the apps that Google Sheets syncs to. So here we go, and just pick out your CRM. I'm gonna go ahead and sync it up to KV Core, but if you have Boomtown, LionDesk, Brokerman, DotLoop, Moxie, Realvolve, or PropertyBase, those are all available. Here we go, I'm gonna click on KV Core. And then just like all the API Nation syncs, you're just gonna sign in. and then sign into Google Sheets. And here we go, we have a few filter options, but I'm just gonna sync everything. I want all my data from KV4 sync into this spreadsheet. So it's super flexible and super robust. I hit start sync and that's it. Now we're gonna start moving all the information I have in KV4, all my leads, all my contacts into a Google Sheet in my Google Drive. So that is tip number one, sync your CRM create a real-time mirror of your CRM in a spreadsheet. Number two, clean up capitalization. So this is one thing we learned really early on with real estate agents. You'll get leads, you'll get contacts from a source, and sometimes the names aren't quite capitalized right. And that's important because if you're gonna be sending out an email and mail merging their first name into your greeting, like, hi, Tom, hi, Carol, you wanna make sure that name is capitalized. That way you look really professional and put together. So let me show you how to do that quickly. We're gonna hop into Google Sheets. And here you see I have a bunch of leads and I got emails and I have full names here. And these names are not capitalized, they're all lowercase. So I need them to get capitalized. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click the column. I'm gonna hit insert one to the right. So now I have an empty column here. And then I'm gonna put a formula here. I'm gonna put equals proper. And then I'm going to open parentheses, click the cell next to it with the name and then close parentheses. And there you go, now you can see it's capitalized and Google Sheets is suggesting I do that for everybody. So I'm gonna hit this button and it's gonna go ahead and capitalize everybody. I'm gonna copy this column header. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is if you click on any of these, you'll see these are all still formulas. And I just want them to be regular text. So I'm gonna highlight this whole thing, right click it, copy, and then go over here to the original column, right click it and do paste values only. And that's gonna put just the text in there. No longer is it a formula. And now I can just delete this. So there it is, that's how you clean up the capitalization very quickly. You'll just use that proper formula and get all those names exactly how they're supposed to be. So number three is split full names. So what happens is you will get those leads or sometimes they'll come in from Facebook and they'll have a full name, but the CRM you're trying to send them to or the marketing tool you're trying to send these leads to have first name, last name. So you need to split these into two separate fields. No problem, this is super easy in Google Sheets. What I'm gonna do here is here's full name and I need to split this into first name and last name. So I'm going to right click, insert one to the right, and now we have this empty column here. You might want to insert one more just to be safe. Sometimes people have three names in there, so I want to be absolutely sure I get this right. And now I'm going to highlight that column, go to data, and then I'm going to come on down here to split text to columns. And that's basically just going to look for a separator. Sometimes it's a comma, sometimes it's a tab, sometimes it's just a space and it's gonna split the text across 
these columns next to it. So it says detect automatically, that works for me, that's fine. I can change it if I want to a space, just to be sure. And there we go, I did it. So now you can see I now have Super Mario. So I'm gonna change this to first name. And then I'm gonna change this to last. And like I said, occasionally you'll have one or two names that have three names. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it right in here. And then I can get rid of this whole column. So there you go. I've split the text of the column. Now I now have a first name and a last name, and this is ready to go into my CRM or marketing tool. So number four is for legibility. So if you're making a table or a report, sometimes it's a lot easier on the eyes if the rows are slightly a different color, just so you can see exactly what you're looking at. Let me show you what that looks like. So here we got a bunch of contacts, and if I'm reading this, it all looks the same. It's all just kind of text on white. If I wanted a little help going through these, maybe I'm calling them or emailing them one by one, what I can do is I can just highlight it. I'm gonna click this box in the corner, go to Format, and click on Alternating Colors, and there you go. I can choose a color if I'm really into it. Maybe I'm going blue, looks great. And now I have a dark blue header automatically, white and then light blue alternating. It helps me go through the list if I'm calling down the list or sending emails or counting or anything else. Just a really handy trick if you're gonna be looking at a spreadsheet for a long time. Which leads us to number five, freeze columns or rows. So this is if you are making those phone calls you have a long list and you can get further down and you're going to forget what are these are these phone numbers are these id numbers what are they so what you want to do is at the top you can see this darker bar here i'm going to drag it and then just drop it right below the headers and that's going to freeze this entire row now as i scroll down the row is stuck at the top and you can do this also if you happen to have headers on the side you just drag this, drag it out to A, and now my email address will always be stuck there, even if I'm scrolling further over and looking for some more information on the right-hand side. And you can drag either of these as far out or as close to the corner as you'd like. And that's how you freeze rows or columns, makes navigating the sheet a lot easier. Number six, create a chart just by asking. This is one of my favorite tips. Let me show you how easy this is. So here we go, we got a bunch of contacts. I've pulled them from my follow-up box. And maybe I have this question in mind. Maybe I think, how many of these people came from Facebook? What I can do is I can just click this explore button in the corner. And then I can just write out a question. And you'll wanna keep a few things in mind. You'll wanna keep things in mind like the exact name of your column that you're gonna ask about. And you might wanna also know exactly how some of the entries are worded or capitalized. So I'm just gonna ask it. Percentage of source is Facebook. And there you go. It understands I want the percentage of my source that is Facebook and it tells me 18.18% of all my leads came from Facebook. It even suggests some questions. Maybe I want to see all my top five sources. So I can just click that. It's going to give me a little table here. Over 200 I have unspecified. That means they don't have a source on them. But after that is Zillow, then Mojo Dialer, Bold Leads, and Open House. I can even make it a chart. And then I can drop that chart in here if I like. So don't forget to check that out. It's a really easy way to query for the exact information you want once you get all your leads or contacts in here and surface those business insights. The last tip I wanna show you is importing data from another sheet into the sheet you're using. So you can actually create a sort of portal in my spreadsheet that shows me exactly the information that's entered and is being entered in another sheet. Let me show you what that looks like. So here I have the sheet I'm working in currently. I follow up boss. Maybe I open that every day, I make all the calls, but I also need to keep track of something that's happening on a separate spreadsheet. But I don't necessarily want to open that spreadsheet, have it open all the time because I'm working in this one. So what I can do is I can make a new sheet here. 
I have this new sheet, and then I'm just gonna import the data from the other sheet. So for example, maybe from this transactions sheet, I just want transactions name, URL, when it was created in the status. I want that on my follow-up boss sheet so it's readily at hand. Maybe I'm making charts based on that. Maybe I'm just keeping track of which transactions are in which status. Either way, I need this information in that sheet. So the easy way to do that, just go back here. I'm gonna type equals, and then I'm gonna type import. And you can see it brings me some options. I'm gonna click on import range. And then I can click on this little question mark and it's gonna tell me exactly how to do this. So I need to put the spreadsheet URL and then I need to put the range string. So let's go find that spreadsheet URL. Here it is. So I'm gonna just highlight this, copy. And I'm gonna put the spreadsheet URL within quotation marks you can see here. So quotation mark, paste, quotation mark, and then I'm gonna put a comma. And now I need to get that range. So that's the page name and then the cells name. So I'm gonna go back here. I can see the page name is dot loop loops dot CSV. And the cells I want are probably A1 through D100 or so. So I'm gonna come back to follow boss. And I'm just gonna type that in. Quotation mark dot loop loops.csv exclamation mark so that they know that's the end of the page name and then i'm going to type the cells i want a1 through d100 close the quotation close the parentheses hit enter it's going to load up and it says i need to connect these sheets so i'm going to go ahead and click allow access and there we go now that information is popped right in here and no matter what happens if somebody does a work in that separate sheet it's just going to be reflected here in my sheet so i can keep working on whatever i have in this sheet and if i have to check something instead of going to a whole nother sheet having that open i can just pop over here and look at this mirror that i've imported so that's it those are the seven things you didn't know you could do with google sheets super helpful tips for real estate professionals everywhere that is sync your crm to google sheets fix capitalization using google sheets split full names to first and last name make it much easier to read by quickly alternating colors freeze those columns or rows so that as you're working in the sheet you always have the headers available you can click on that explore button in the bottom right corner and just ask it questions. It'll help you create charts and tables without you having to be too tech savvy. And finally, you can import cells from a totally different spreadsheet so that they're always available in the worksheet you're working on. So we hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or ideas, give us a phone call, shoot us an email. We're API Nation, connecting the world's applications. We love doing this stuff.